I think the honorable thing for our species to do is deny our programming. Stop reproducing. Walk hand in hand into extinction. One last midnight, brothers and sisters opting out of a raw deal. We do not trust any friends or family members. I repeat, do not trust Next time I'll warn you. So you were telling me a story about... <laughs> we won't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hi everybody. We're just gonna we're gonna brute force this shit. Welcome to the Poe Clan show. Uh, this is um, Extinction Agenda. Chris and James. Uh, we're talking uh, Moto Hagio's uh, The Poe Clan, Volume One, uh, released by Fantagraphics in 2019. Uh, but originally, uh, we're doing the this Volume One has like chapters one through six, and those were produced. March of uh, 1972 through to July 1973. Uh, and they were published in uh, uh, Besatsu Sojo comic. Hopefully I fucking pronounced that right. And um, yeah, this is, um, might as well just not bury the lead. This is uh, this is fabled or, or thought to be the origin of uh, a genre of, of shoujo uh, girls comics uh, featuring boy love. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce the the Japanese word for that. Shonenai? I'll that's my best guess on that one. It's a good guess. Yeah. Um yeah. Um <laughs> and how was, and how yeah. Oh, holy fuck. Um <laughs> so I'd never read this, uh but I was reading about it um for my birthday I got uh I got a book on manga. And it's uh, sort of like all the different about all the different jars and this and that. And then I just saw some of the art. And I always I always like when we get a chance to tackle uh, a female comics producer because we 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 never do that uh, here at the Extinction Agenda. We're we're pretty pretty much a sausage party most of the time. Uh, and also so to kind of like do a, a female creator and some weird ass manga shit. In a, in a genre that I normally wouldn't touch with a 10 foot uh, cow pole. Um, yeah, I suggest it. And you, uh, <laughs> you, you, uh, you rose to the, to the challenge of the Poe I was clan. all in. Absolutely. Yeah. Man. Yeah. I don't think I've ever read anything that's more explicitly not for me. Do you know how, did you feel <laughs> that? Like, just like, I didn't, Oh yeah. I didn't connect with this in the way that you're meant to connect with it, but it's good. Like, it's really good. Like it's, it's really well done. Uh, She's a phenomenal artist. Mm-hmm. The whole time, like rereading it, and that I'm, let's put that loosely. I didn't read it twice because it's 500 pages of just like, like I agree with you. This book was not for me. And early on, when you started reading it, you were like, James, I don't know if you're gonna have the patience <laughs> <laughs> to go through this. And that was a fair instinct, but I managed to like I found my way in. Like the fact that it's um, like it's it's so obviously. Uh, indebted to the weird tale uh and oh, i never and, even thought of that really but yeah i could see that yeah well i was thinking of you know obviously edgar Allan poe poe clan the main character is right. edgar the other one's alan so there it is i did not and, even uh, connect <laughs> that holy <laughs> yeah, shit sorry yeah sorry pal and the um i was thinking of uh la fanu's uh carmilla which which is sort of like the kind of in the canon sort of the next entry within the weird tale and it's uh it's yeah all right so it's you know it's uh uh children vampire or at least one of them is a vampire and there's like the sort of a sexual homosexual subtext between the two girls uh and i kind of placed it in that sphere it's very different there's no menace exactly although there's that i think that kind of changes over time but this is this is far more about sex than it is about vampirism very much so i was thinking uh peter pan lost boys sort of thing too like there's 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 that kind of element to it like the you know neverland you know you're never gonna mm-hmm. go grow old um, yeah it's very poetic yeah poetic sorry yeah uh, <laughs> uh, you went there you went yeah, there yeah i'm not afraid um yeah this is another one where like I have pages of notes, but at the same time, I'm like, I don't know what the fuck to talk about. <laughs> like, I don't, I like, I this, think there's lots book. to talk about. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's like, yeah. but it, it's, it's hard to know where to start. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I, I want to, con- 
Oh, go on. Sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, I think like I couldn't help drawing parallels to interview with a vampire. Uh, but like the, the, the text is the subtext is text here. Like it's, it's uh, very clearly homoerotic. But at first I was wondering if it was going to like if it was going to go there or if it was just going to dance around. Nope, not at all. Definitely by chapter six when they're at the boarding school. I, I think I think there's um, obviously there's there's a lot of earlier stuff like but but I feel it becomes a lot more uh, when explicit. Yeah. Like when when Edgar and Alan are, are caught by um, who is it Killian or is it Mateus? I think it's Mateus. I think it's Mateus. And, yeah. 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 And he 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 comes in and there's like there's fire surrounding them and it's like Cyclops getting caught with uh, Emma Frost. Um, and yeah and and they're clear you know it's just like yeah they're making out and he's like come on in you know um and so yeah the vampirism becomes more and more sexualized and so much so that i uh volume two comes out later this year yeah uh, and i'm pretty fucking excited to see where this shit goes like I, <laughs> i'm surprised to find myself in this space yeah i don't, I don't think i'll buy game. it but i'm definitely gonna like just gonna borrow it i just you know yeah, well, we Just might to have find to, out. We might have to update people at some yeah, point. Yeah. Um, I know how I know how it ends because I okay. read an article ab- about it, but um, maybe we'll get there. Maybe I'll spoil it. Maybe I won't. It's uh, right. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. This starting this is like it's like being slapped in the face with a velvet glove. It's just a challenge to a duel of, of something, you know, like it's a, open the first page, limpid locks of silver. And like, there's just a splash page of like these two uh, beautiful, like, I don't know, teenagers, whatever in, in the curtain shadow, eternal beauty, eternal life. It's all mm-hmm. flowing. And like, just like, what the fuck are you getting into? And like, it's a story of, um, this guy, like uh, this 15 year old, no, he's 14. Cause he mentions he's 14 a lot. And uh, yeah. he's just like, I'm 14. <laughs> Falls in love with this girl. who just kind of shows up in his town, like this beautiful young girl. And uh, it's his first love and it's heartbreak and shit. And uh, of course, like she ends up moving away and uh, yeah, you mustn't leave. Don't leave. I love you. It's so, it's so ridiculous. It's so over the top teenage emotion, like just mm-hmm. this child, like puppy love. And then he grew, then like suddenly he's growing up and he's like 40 and he sees this girl on the street. It's the same girl. And I was like, what the fuck? I thought for sure this guy was going to be our protagonist, like investigating. Like, <laughs> what? And I'm like, why are we doing this? Where does this go from here? No. Right. Luckily, it's sort of like a one shot of like trying to give you the impression of, you know, what it's like to to never age. Yeah, it's um OK. So this this first chapter so the the uh, um, Hagio, she was uh, she wasn't she's working for the magazine, but they don't want to give her a serial. They they'll only give her like uh, short works or whatever because she hasn't proven herself yet. Mm-hmm. So she wants to do a serial. So like what she ends up doing, uh, in, at least according to what she says in an interview, is she kind of sneaks a serialized narrative into the magazine, and before they realize it, it's kind of a fait accompli. Uh, and then they let her, they let her finish it off. And, and, okay. I, and I feel, you know, like you kind of notice it in this first story cause it is, oh, you know, it's a one shot. Um, but she keeps coming back to the, the poem, you know, limpid locks of silver, uh, throughout. And, you know, this is, this is kind of a place setting, but I, I think there was a larger idea and they settled on this very, cause the, the later installments are much, much longer. Um, and, and they get progressively longer because she's progressively sneaking her way into the magazine. <laughs> OK, that yeah. makes a lot of sense. And I kind of wondered if it was something like that, because it, it does have a very contained, like. Mysterious, like a uh, short story quality to it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it and it doesn't like it looks great. Like you, you would you would said this looks great. And, and I found myself throughout this thinking like. God, I wish this person was drawing a story I gave a shit about. <laughs> uh, you know, I was just like, I just like, cause they did, um, they also did a bunch of uh, sci-fi adaptations, you know, Ray Bradbury and Isaac Asimov. Apparently they're a big sci-fi head. Okay. Um, I kind of would like to see. Prime is a big thing. Like, uh, is it right. like or other? Yeah. 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 Um, so I, I kind of want to look at that stuff. Like uh, this was almost against my will. I was drawn into this, like Edgar seducing me. Uh, yeah, Absolutely. 
yeah just just yeah. by the strength of the art like this is so this is really fantastic like like everything's flowing there's like flowers falling everywhere there's like wind swept scenes so it just looks like big and like just, yeah again like despite the fact that i want to make fun of it like it's just it does like catch your heart you know it's just like wow that's what a beautiful like image or like that sort of thing mm-hmm. yeah yeah and it, yeah in a lesser in a lesser from a lesser hand this this would have been like it's already almost incomprehensible at points like i yeah i don't it's 500 pages, and again, I took so many notes, but only because I was so confused. Yes. I was like, I, I really have to write all this down. Yeah. You, you Stas, I, I forgot that motherfucker existed, you know, and um, <laughs> it's, just, it's just so much happening. Um, it has a huge problem with, like, especially as it goes on, like, there are just too many, like, frail, like, fey, like, blonde, wispy, like, uh, people, you know, and just, like, you can't keep them all straight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's so true. So anyway, the, the first major installment is uh, chapter two, I would say, in the village yes. of Poe. I think that's when we're starting to get like an actual story yeah. rather than than kind of a, a teaser trailer. Uh, where so we got little Mary Bell and we we got the impression that uh, she's a little girl who's uh, who does not age and, and will just keep going and going. Um, and she. <laughs> gets a straight up fucking shot right off the bat, you know, right off the bat uh, in the first two pages. Cause like there's this hunter out and he's in a, a fog and she comes out. Shoosh. Um, yeah. And he just, uh, and Edgar's pissed, hits him with a, his own rifle. <laughs> it was going to blow his brains out. I kind of wanted to see that. That would have been awesome, but not that book, not this book. Uh, yeah. and, uh, yeah. And Mary Bell is, uh, brought back into a, a village and Edgar's of course, pissed in the background, giving him the stink eye the whole time. This guy, what's his name? Um, the dad. Uh, yeah. Oh, or, yeah or, the, or the hunter he's going to, he, yeah, the hunter, he's going to, uh, he's going to write that journal. He's like Glenn Smith or something like that. I can't remember his name. I think, I think it's Glenn Smith. Glenn Smith. Oh yeah. That uh, sounds my, right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Glenn Smith. Lord songbird. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, Lord, <laughs> sorry, Lord Longbird. <laughs> My fault. Uh, okay. Um. So yeah. Anyway, uh, Lord Lord Longbird is. <laughs> I think I'm just gonna call him that now. Um. He's uh, he's very concerned because he shot a young girl, but of course uh, there's more than meets the eye here. Yeah. And Edgar tells him, "Yeah, if Mary Bell dies, I'll kill you. If Mary Bell lives, I'll send you home." They're um. They're brother and sister obviously and there's clearly like this incestuous vibe going on there as well it, it early on it certainly seems that way or well when you don't know the story it's very easy to think that and i, I think, yeah i think later on that that is kind of broken but there's definitely like i'm i'm not saying that this story doesn't uh signpost a lot of incest um i i don't know if it i think it kind of moves away from the idea that um of them with the brother sister love. I, I think it'll uh, Hagio wants to return to that later on. Um, yeah, but yeah, I think defi- it, definitely early. I think it finds something it, it's more interested in that, you know, like along the way. I think so. Yeah. 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 That's fair. One thing I want to say about, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of getting ahead of ourselves, but I was also, I was really, I think one of the reasons I was able to keep reading this is because you never knew when someone was going to die. Like people are just killed all the time, except for Edgar. Edgar is the only like through line throughout all of this, uh, you know, spoilers for everyone. But basically like you think there's a main character who's not going away because you just spent like 150 pages with them. And, uh, and then they're executed and, and turn into dust and literally they're just blown away. Yeah. Uh, I think that goes a long way to making this work. That's true. I, I really like it at that point, like, um, and up to the point where, um, you know, the family kind of just dis- dissolves. Uh, I, I was really getting into it. Like I, I was like, I thought that was fantastic. It, like a great vampire story. And then it kind of mm-hmm. does it. So it does, it, it's very interested in something else. Well, I'm sure we'll, we'll definitely get to that, but, yeah. uh, it doesn't go in a direction that I would have preferred, but, um, yeah, I, uh, Vamp- vampire Nella get it right yeah. and this is an earlier yeah sorry yeah they're not vampires, they're vampirella 
<laughs> I, I like the, this even in this one there's a bit of a flirtation between uh, the hunter and edgar um and he's you know he's kind of sizing him up and testing him out and you know like there's he's explaining there like they live in this uh this like castle this fortress that's surrounded by roses like fields of roses there's nothing to eat there and um it is a very fairy tale kind of thing to like that's a constant motif of like taking away like you know yes they're they're vampire like but they're really much more like fairies um they live in this enchanted world and when he goes back to his own like town it's like oh like you were gone for two days but it's like it passed in a dream sort of thing yeah i think and i think hagio moves like early, early on it's much more like that um but particularly in this story uh and the sprite like quality of them like I, I i agree with you they they it has it intersects with fairies um but that uh the village of poe or whatever like that that sort of mystical space disappears later and and yeah. then it's 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 just like the fairy vampires uh yeah. out, out in the world doing their thing but it's that's definitely where they come from from like yeah. a, a like a fairy space yeah like this is like a beauty in the bees castle it's, it's an enchanted woods it's it's all that mm-hmm. stuff yeah yeah and yeah glenn smith or 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 <laughs> lord Longbeard, longbird uh yeah i just like immediately you know getting to the flirtation thing i think it's not even a flirtation like edgar fucking straight up goes into his bed <laughs> who's there That's right. you know and, and <laughs> uh and symbolically rapes him um yeah he's like all shadowed yeah he's standing or he's like just like yeah he's right over him mm-hmm. and that's my favorite line one of my favorite lines of this whole thing is like, like yeah because he finds out that he's been bitten and maribel we can do i just need to give you just need to give us a bit of your blood blood did you suck my blood you suck my blood <laughs> yeah uh and it's yeah he's drawn so uh and he's it's all like quivery and stuff like there's so much um yeah, i'm gonna say it over and over because every once in a while there's just a page that you're just like this is gorgeous you know, like i yeah. wish most manga looked like this um it's like splash pages in here are used for like, you know, to show you a garden or like just someone with like flowing gowns or just like a, you know, like a scene of someone's long hair tangled or, or like poetic fragments. It's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, here's something like on page 40 after the you suck my blood. Um, it, that's exactly it. Like it's it's like every once in a while uh, a literal poem just inter- it interrupts everything that's happened. And it's not even like a, like a chorus because it has chorus like elements um, in, in that it often will uh, repeat, you know, bits of poetry that you've read previously or, or, a, or a common refrain. But I, I can't say it's even really done artfully. Like it doesn't prepare you for the moment. It's more of like a it just kind of drops in and confuses you. And <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah and you're like but but it looks so good you know like who am i to who am i to tell hagio not to do this i would never exactly yeah you go right ahead girl you were killing it absolutely um the other thing i wanted to to highlight here is that uh like they're although they're you know vampires or vampirella uh Mm -hmm. they um they're also like the ultimate aristocrats uh like they're they're so refined they're so perfect that they they don't even need to to bite someone they can touch people and drain their blood like they're just they're they they can just kind of like make people faint at a touch and it's mm-hmm. it's you know gentle and and uh and you know like none of that savagery that you would expect yeah yeah i i i, and I was con- like later on uh edgar is going to be you know he we're like what what are we we don't produce anything and we don't have a lineage yes we're we're not going to leave anything in the world and i and i do think about like common images of aristocrats as parasites upon the land and yeah, of course the Edgar's vampire so has floating. parasite you know yeah 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 and, and and that's like that that um pairing um like is deep in the heart of vampire fiction too like that idea of like yeah like a class that that draws upon the workers or or that's kind of taking advantage of people yeah it uh, you know i've never i've never uh, i've never read dracula um and perhaps you're the one who told me this or perhaps i heard it somewhere else uh but my understanding is like dracula moves on into london uh in in pursuit of will uh wilhelmina and you know one of the things that 
he does is is start buying up real estate. Yeah, uh, maybe I'm, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. 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 So there's a scene yeah, where yeah. they like catch him at a bank and like ambush him and he like drops his money bags. It's, it's so Jesus dumb. Like nobody, Christ, nobody ever puts that in any. Yeah, it's really stupid. <laughs> oh, I love that. I mean, that's yeah. too bad. And Bram Stoker, uh, not Bram Stoker, uh, Francis Ford Coppola left that out for some reason. I don't. Yeah, know. no one ever, no one ever features that for some weird reason. I would love to see that. I, I, I understand why because it has like, it has vaudeville shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> then a giant, uh, you know, hook comes out and pulls him off the stage. <laughs> uh, so anyway, none of that. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, this is much. Whereas, you know, my understanding of of, uh, you know, Dracula, Dracul um, is. It's dark, it's Eastern European, it's Eastern European, uh, you know, where, whereas this is this is genteel Western European. This is London. This is Germany. Uh, this is this wants to take Western European ideas of the vampire. You know, my understanding from reading what little of the literature surrounding this that i did is that uh japan doesn't it didn't have its own sort of indigenous vampire culture uh and so you know maybe it has something vampire like i honestly don't know um but it you know it's it's just part of a westernization of of japanese culture uh and to to pull this in and to pull all these um these sort of tropes and and you know the weird fiction and the gothic fiction and um romanticism and and all that stuff and and to um yeah yeah and, and and to give it and to idealize it in the way that that japanese culture was doing post-war yes uh i, th- I think that's fair to say very um, fair to you say you know yeah there's yeah, um it depends on were... where you're reading i mean it depends on what comics you're reading but generally speaking yeah yeah there was a rage for that and there was um like a not a, not an attempt to purge their own culture, but just sort of like a devaluing of of of, Jap- of Japanese culture. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and so you know, okay, what one of the like this is obviously it's not obviously, but like so this this is a this is a girls' magazine comic, and what you know one thing uh, that really struck me and continues to strike me and will continue to strike me throughout all of this is just like the massive alienation that it represents like the the um i don't even know if i really have the word for it i don't i don't know if alienation is correct it's just like they're displacing themselves almost completely like i don't want to consider myself as a girl i don't want to consider myself as a a japanese girl i want to consider myself as a western boy and and then i want to i want to approach themes and issues that still concern me um as a japanese girl you know like it's a complete um sort of disassociation and it and it's and it's a bizarre safe space and actually this kind of gets to the peter pan never never fantasy land thing yeah um you know that's and, interesting and, yeah um i go on i heard recently a theory um and i can't remember the name of the the podcast i heard it on um but uh so apologies for this if I'm stealing some of stuff, but they were just referencing um, a like the idea of shoujo manga and like the the co- the commonness of the the boy boy pairing, and mm-hmm. one theory that people have for the like why this took off is the the idea that you could project yourself onto either either one of the couple so that um, you know like just depending on your own attitude you, you could imagine yourself in in either situation so it like just increased the popularity. I mean that can't be all there is to it because I'm sure that like I'm sure that, that there is an element of just the fact that it's two men together must be appealing. Uh, but well, two boys, you know, like it. But I I do see I I see some of that. I mean I think I think maybe all of this is just part of the rich stew that that makes this thing work, you know. And, and yeah. that, like and then and then the base. Let's be honest, the base sort of perversity of it, you know, like not not perversity, but like sort of tabooness of it. The is tabooness, all, is, yeah. Yeah, that's that's going to be appealing. Like, let's not get ourselves here. Absolutely. I've been on the Internet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, yeah. So just like just girls are, are getting their kicks and but they're also like it's, it's still kind of like but it's it's a nice story. Um, yeah. Well, it's well done. It's, it's, yeah, yeah. It's I don't know if it's a nice yeah. story. Maybe I'll take that back. But um, I yeah. So like, and this 
like their artful touches, like this whole third chapter being like, so like almost like a Neil Gaiman effect of like breaking away from the, uh, from the main action. Like you get mm-hmm. this story of this, this family that's been touched. Like this, this guy's descendants have this journal and um, they like their life is going shitty. Like this, this girl's life, you know, she, she gets married, her children are dying. Like she's getting older. Her husband's a drunk musician. who just kind of like, just, you know, a bit of a deadbeat. And like this, pro- like she has a journal from her father talking about this, this, this castle of roses and the, the Vampirella. And she just kind of clings to that, that romantic idea that like, there's a better, better dream out there, but it's like mm-hmm. all the time, like her, her own experience. And it's going, you know, they're going through the war. It's like, it's Germany. Uh, uh, there's a, uh, there's all the, the turmoil that they're experiencing. Yeah, World War One, World War Two. Uh, it ends up in 1959 or something like that. And you know, the the grandmother and the Longbird family. Uh, yeah, and she she was in England, um, and she come came. You know, so she's uh, emigre. Um, and yeah, and and then yeah, March 1959. Uh, the I think it's the granddaughter uh, still has the journal and has this idea that they're gonna publish it um i was really the yeah there there is something um so it starts i think you already said this but it starts off like the daughter of glenn smith mr longbird uh finds she finds his journal as because he's passed away um and you know she's like shot a girl um but then she's immediately like immediately possessed by the very concept of the eternal village. Um, even before she has troubles, you know, like she's just surrounded. She, she ends up in that poetic space uh, with laurels surrounding her and that sort of thing. And and she ends up similarly obsessed because it's, it's revealed that um, Lord Longbird would read his journal over and over going back to it and has sort of a, um, yeah, like a narcotic effect. Uh, and, and she's, yeah, she's addicted to it moving on, uh, and never quite escapes, uh, until her, her own passing. Yeah. Yeah. And the cause of you're a liar, Tony. So many promises you made me, you promised to make me happy. <laughs> it's like, she's <laughs> just, uh, you know, life's not really working out the way she thought. I love one thing I love, uh, I think she does really well, uh, is just kind of sublimating emotion. Uh, you know, like the 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 surface emotion b- betraying another thing, um, and the, you get a really good example here when she's like she's kind of walking on the bridge. Should I go home to England? Uh, I married and crossed the North Sea. Maybe I should swallow my pride. She's just kind of thinking about going back home, like her husband's gone, and then her daughter mm-hmm. tackles her. Mama, I thought you were gonna jump. She's just like you know, like no, I was going to, but it, like it really does seem like she's uh, you know wandering that bridge for that reason. Maybe gonna throw herself in. Yeah, and and we kind of see something like that later with Eustace, who, you know, given a choice between two outcomes, refuses to choose. Yes. Uh, and uh, and <laughs> just dips dips his wrists into the hot water. <laughs> yes, yeah, <that's> right. Yeah. <laughs> um. <clears throat> yeah, and like it's it's, you know, and uh, again, the sublimating emotion or or like this is uh, th- this broken marriage and this this woman who who wishes to be happy and faces these difficulties is kind of meant, I think, to be Germany in a, in microcosm, you know, things, things are not going well and therefore world war one, and then things are okay for a little while and then things disintegrate again. And then world war two happens. Um, and they want to say something larger about human I, and I think that's another reason this this book works uh, is is because the Hagio makes no wastes no opportunity to like somehow try to gesture towards something bigger than what is on the page uh, and to try to like make the story be some sort of synecdoche or, or at the yeah. very least that's that's definitely what's happening here. I think where nostalgia and the, the desire for the eternal you know, I, I was thinking of Timothy Snyder, um, uh, you know, writing about, uh, you know, a historian of uh, Eastern European history 
uh, specializing in fascism and the Holocaust and that sort of thing, you know, uh, makes the distinction between, you know, like sort of politics and eternal politics. And eternal politics is, you know, tends towards ultra conservatism, fascism, et cetera. And, and you kind of see that being played out here uh, through uh, a young girl's interactions with the diary of her, her father and, you know, set against the, the backdrop of, of German modern modern german history uh, i don't know if what's that's what hey you and then and then of course you want to place it in the context of japanese culture at that time yeah and everything they lived through you know like and and what are they really talking about here like it's definitely uh, yeah. yeah yeah that's cool i think it also it really impresses upon you that like maybe more so than any other vampire story i've read the the sweep of history and just how um just what like how brief people's lives are compared to these these uh eternals like the the eternal youth of of edgar and well uh mainly edgar because maribel yeah. doesn't, uh, doesn't last <laughs> the whole time but yeah yeah and, and yeah I mean, and you know i guess that that transitions well uh for us to um uh chapter four yeah because like so the the granddaughter uh who acquires the journal she's just looking for a way to make money off of it i think you try yeah. to get it published or something like that and then but they're talking around it at the talking about it at the dinner table and uh and then the little boy the you know the, the descendant uh, of the long bird descendant he's in um what's this kid's name actually uh he's not he... i don't know he really doesn't show up anymore he just kind of like bridges the chapters yeah, I he think. looks very much like the kid, like Mateus. Uh, oh shit! Yeah, he looks like him. I don't know if I don't think it's him. Um, yeah, but, and I don't know if that would add anything if it was him. Yeah, it couldn't be. But anyway, he he gets the impression that uh, you know it's Edgar and Alan, and uh, you know he's like, oh no, there's no way that could be, that could be the vampire. Um. Yeah. yeah. Then, oh, so then we get like uh, now we're flat and then we're flashbacking. And yeah, I d- yeah, the comparison to game is appropriate because like all of a sudden the gates are opened up and like here's the full sweep of this story in in, in chapter three. Uh, and and it doesn't necessarily. Have to have these characters, um, although for the rest of the thing, it does. So I like the comparison's not totally apt but uh but i i saw what you were thought i saw what you're getting at yeah um yeah we get uh well what one's five when they're leaving okay yeah so we're getting back to uh we're going back to the time when uh uh edgar and mary bell are, are with um Lord and our uh, Baron and Baroness uh, Portsnell. What, what the fuck is their name? Uh, um, yeah, Portnell. Portnell. Okay, I don't know why I wrote Portsnell. Interesting. In um, in one of the articles I read, actually the article I read. Let's be more specific. <laughs> um, they were uh, they were. This was prior to this translation. They were referred to as Baron uh, Posenell. Uh, so the Po was in their last name. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Hence so I don't know. I, yeah. Yeah. So um, maybe, you know, I, I did wonder why Portsnell, Portsnell. Um, but anyway. Um, and yeah, they're showing up. They're aristocrats. They're uh, the Baron and Baroness Portnell uh, arrived from London and they're this is in Germany, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it's hard to, <laughs> to really follow what's happening here. Yeah. Um, and uh, they they show up in a new town, and immediately the local young doctor is like, mm-mm. and he wants to uh, sleep with the Baroness. And Maribel and Edgar are there, but Maribel faints because she's weak. Um, yeah. She's like, she's just a cipher. Like she's not. She's nothing. Like she's uh, she's there to be aristocratic and delicate, and uh, and to faint a lot. Yeah, definitely in this chapter, uh, she she gets a good she gets a good good showing, if I remember correctly, in in chapter five. Uh, mm. 
Yeah, she falls in love with Eustace or whatever. Right, when she's still, like, mortal. Uh, yeah. Right, right, we're going further back. Yeah, okay, so yeah. prior, yeah, pardon me. Um, yeah, even, even, in, in, once upon a time, she didn't totally suck. Yeah, uh, but exactly. He, but he, here, she definitely sucks. Um, and yeah, this was, uh, this goes on for a little bit. Um, but we get the boy, boy love elements here. Oh man, this is my favorite chapter. I, 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 there's so much to draw out of it, I think. Yeah. Well, uh, go. Let's, uh, what do you got? Um, what do I have? Um, well, for, I love the, uh, the appearance of Alan Twilight where he just like, he's like some kind of platonic ideal of a, of a nobleman. He's just kind of like charging hard on a beautiful black stallion. And he's just yeah. like cold, the elitist bursting out of some, uh, some bushes and, uh, like kind of like almost runs over Edgar and gets thrown from his horse. And then Edgar kind of runs over to him and he's like, he's like sucking the blood off his hand, but it's like this sort of like, it's almost like this, um, delicate, you know, like kissing the hand gesture like that. That was the first, like, yeah, there's some subtext here for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually it, it the, the sound effect is lick. So he's, he licks his hand and then wraps him with his, like he, he pulls on his bow tie, uh, to use as a tourniquet at the same time that he's like, he's, he's been at this game for a while, right? Any chance he gets, he's just like, he's going to take a little lick of blood. Uh, and then he wraps the guy up and, uh, then they, yeah, they establish their distance and look at each other and like, yeah, the silent and all, there's no, there's a few words, ah, ugh, um, shivering horse you know but basically it's all just action and they're sizing each other up and kind of you know and, yeah and alan's there's, just like did that guy just kiss me they're rivals from the v it's that it's that like it's so like in every um in every fanfic like the my uh my daughter is like so into like these fan cultures where you know it's like i ship this guy i ship that oh shit and it's, oh, okay. yeah, yeah and yeah. it's all like it's always like so popular to be like whatever characters like hate each other those yeah. are the two that they're gonna put together yeah like starscream and megatron <laughs> like, uh, my understanding exactly. is that yeah there's uh there's there's some fan fiction if someone wants to read about that that's hilarious yeah. Didn't even consider that. So <laughs> yeah, I've seen I've seen pictures. I've seen pictures <laughs> of them making it. I see. Um, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. That definitely stood out to me. I can see I dog eared uh, a lot in this book because I was like, I. I don't really have a note. I just kind of need to look at it and kind of. Yeah, yeah, I get it. For sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I also like Um, you kind of get the sense for their family dynamic and. um you know so much of the plot of the uh, like to the extent that there is really a plot is you know like you don't know this guy like i know him you know like that's like edgar is completely standoffish and like very cruel at first but the more you get to know him the more you understand him and same with uh maybe yeah same with alan alan is like mm-hmm. this totally uh you know he's like very aloof and and just like really really a shit dad. he's a spoiled shit really but uh he's like the um what is he? He's like the heir to the the nobleman's whatever throne. Like I don't know. He's he's next in line to run the town. Yeah, basically. yeah, yeah. yeah and he knows it, and everyone kisses up to him. So he he's despises everyone. Like he just he's sick of being um you know catered to. Yeah, and one of the reasons he likes Edgar is because Edgar uh, doesn't put up with his shit. You know, like exactly. Yeah. He's a challenge. I just want to be. I just want to be cucked. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> Uh, I like the um, the family dynamic of like the, the like Edgar's emotional journey is kind of like he's kind of like a kid finding out that his parents are swingers. Like they're like you know the dad's like we don't attack people we select and we welcome the chosen into our clan. And he's yeah, just like, no, that's exactly it. Like yeah, like getting back to that doctor. Like they're, immediately they're like okay that guy's into us and you know they're they're basically talking about how they're gonna slowly bring him in and, and basically have sex slash kill him yeah. um, as uh, as part of their like, yeah, they're, they're really swinger culture. But the teen angst part is that because Edgar and um, Maribel are ch- like, you know, they're teens, they can't, they won't convert others. Like it was a, it was a big accident that they were made into vampires in the first place. So they like, they yeah. have to move constantly. So they have like the, the resentment of like, you know, 
you'll never understand the, the pain that I go through, Dad. <laughs> like, because uh, they're always they're always they can never settle or or put down roots or or have anything of their own. Yeah, well, I kind of want to jump ahead to chapter whatever six, uh, whatever, just for a moment when um, like the the origin story. Okay. Because uh, because there is there is something there's an Oedipal element to the relationship between Edgar and the Baron Portnall. Uh, cause like he's at first little, little Edgar's like, he, he's got a teenage crush on, um, what's her name? Uh, Claudia, the, the Baroness, I, I forget right. her name. Um, and yeah, and he's, and, but, and then he's, he's, he's genuinely disappointed when it's discovered like, oh, the Baron's going to marry this woman. Um, and right. so, you know, and, and marry equals turn into a vampire. Yes. Uh, you know, like at a certain, cause the Baron and. Uh, and again, still staying in, in a later future story, the Baron meets the girl at 15 and he's like, oh, perfect. Oh. Yeah, you know, he's and, literally like grooms her to the age of yeah. 20. Yeah, yeah. And sets it. Yeah. And then like brings her home to mom and like mom's a vampire, turns into her vampire at age 20, like a, a.k.a. marriage. Um, and and this Which is, is what, just like Twilight, by the way. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Alan Twilight. Right. Like, I was, yeah, uh, you know, yeah. I, I was like, did, did they know about this? Um, yeah. So there's, you know, like the 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 subtext of the or or the the undertone of the family relationship is like Edgar's not just mouthing off because he's a teenager who's really hurt. He's he's also like I I wanted to sleep with mom, you know. Yes, uh, that's true. Actually, yeah, I didn't. Yeah, it's definitely edible. Yeah. Uh, and uh, but. I also I also like how this this book sets up the rules of vampirism, you know Edgar you're not reflecting, uh, and he they they can consciously, so they have all the vampire stuff, but they they can reflect they can get, give offer reflections in mirrors if they wish, they don't have to be afraid, uh, of crosses and biblical stories and stuff like that. That's right. Uh, I love yeah. love that element of it. And in fact, um, one of my favorite, me, my favorite image in this whole thing is that uh, that scene where like uh, Edgar encounters Alan somewhere. I forget where exactly, but mm-hmm. like there's like he's clearly about to like he kind of it's out in the wilderness, like he attacks him. He's about to bite him like it's don't be alarmed. It's nothing at all. And then um, you get that picture of uh, it's page 130 where there's kind of that like vortex where he's like, yeah. don't run away. I won't do anything. And then Alan just starts citing the Bible, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament. And they're kind of swirling in this void of creation until um, Edgar runs away because he's being quoted scripture or something. I don't know if it's scripture, but you know, talking about God or something, but it's such mm-hmm. a, like there's like your coded moment where it is sex and it is like, the you know he's summoning these conventional teachings to to deny his attraction to edgar as well so like the you know running away from that is like uh you know the the, the curse of vampirism is, is also like just conventional like morality yeah um and i you know lord portnell and and edgar runs home and he's like oh the jig is up you know like i i i kissed this boy <laughs> and now they know <laughs> that and now they know about us and um and and the Baron is he's just like hold on a second you know like the, the you know just because this guy thinks that you're a vampire like all that you need to do uh, like you ran away from the Bible Duh. you know and there's, there's basically he's like embrace secularism just like like forget all of those those social conservative ideological trappings and uh, and then make him disbelieve that you're a vampire yeah uh, fantastic. Yeah, and do I not love, allow him to believe. Yeah, sorry. I love that the dad's like, this is a good place. Like, these people are enlightened. They don't typically believe in religion anymore. Like, we don't have to worry about it. Although some people like Alan may still cling to that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Or they or they remember, like, if you ever attacked by a vampire, <laughs> you know, start reciting the Bible. Like, it's it's a defense mechanism. It's, a, it's like yeah. an old school atavistic de- defense mechanism. Because, like, I don't think... In any other context in this story, Alan is especially religious. I might be wrong about that. No, no, because no, he's in no, mass and stuff, isn't he? No, no. Okay, yeah, but I, he, I don't think he's like he does go to mass, but I think it's sort of like convent. You know, you you have to go. Everybody on does. Yeah. yeah. 
so sort of like it just kind of like bits of it kind of come to mind in that moment i like um i like then that uh edgar like uh like being gay becomes a cover for vampirism where he's like you know like oh, you you were really strange in the woods the other day i just wanted to give you a kiss on the neck yeah. well you seem so down <laughs> it's like <laughs> yeah you, that's how you that's how you trick people into not believing you're a vampire yeah well i you know in this universe like that that sort of thing flies like because like yeah. again jumping into the future in the boys school like there's like there's that cool guy who gives them cigarettes in the dorm room and uh you know they're talking about how that that uh that car robin. guy robin car yeah robin car he was such a cutie we took pictures of him and and they were talking about kissing on the neck or something like that oh is this a new game uh <laughs> it's by that point sure. Yeah. yeah, there's like no like every every guy in that school has like like just like that subtext. There's like horror oh, yeah. racism everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. It's just it's just gone wild. Um uh, yeah. I and which is why like chapter volume two really beckons to me. I'm like, just how can, <laughs> how how gay can can this get? <laughs> Where does it go? Yeah, how does it get further? Yeah. So uh yeah. So so Edgar and Alan are so, OK, the doctor wants to sleep with the Baroness. Edgar wants to sleep with Alan. Alan wants to sleep with Maribel, who is uh, is Maribel still there at this point? Yeah, she is still there. Yeah. So he's he's into Maribel. And this the, the, so Maribel is kind of like his beard. Um, Definitely. And. Yeah. And then how does it uh, is this is this the story when. uh Mary this Bell is when is, she dies. Yeah. Yeah. This she's fucking straight up executed. Yeah. Yeah. This is oh yeah. That's just... like <laughs> it operates on such a high level here though. Like there's some there's yeah. like this dizzying panel transition where like he's looking at the window and it's raining and then all of a sudden on the next page you're like it's Mary Bell like looking out the same window uh, and like uh, you know kind of thinking of him and like it's really cool. And there's also we kind of find out some of these family secrets like uh, Alan's family he finds you know what it's all like this convention just gets obliterated like family is revealed to be just like i don't know corrupt or like just a, a lie uh, uh something that is you know not not needed um he, alan finds out that his family um is like uh, built on incest like his uh like he's he's supposed to marry this um it's the typical marriage plot right but it's like yeah mm-hmm. she, uh, she like he's being forced to marry this woman this cousin so it's like you know in, in a typical story it'd be like the woman like just doesn't want to marry that uh you know like this lout or whatever and then longs for romance like the, he's in that position here mm-hmm. yeah and then he finds out the terrible secret and like kind of like runs out he's like maribel like take me away and then um of course uh alan's family uh sorry edgar's family is about to be destroyed too and it's it's like you got to clear out like all of this heteronormativity stuff so that, so that we can get to the real story. Yeah. Um, and it's all coded in this like. Place beyond time. Yes. You know, like, yeah, like join join me in this like there's no <laughs> it's eternal. It's, you know, and, and it, yeah, which, you yeah. know, I, I guess I guess makes sense because like vampirism equals um, desire, uh, homosexual desire. But also, you know, uh, as we've already sort of discussed, like a, a means for a young Japanese girl to displace themselves and, and experience some things without actually experiencing some things. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, yeah, because what's it? The doctor is starting to figure out that they're vampires and he's freaking out. Um, at the same time, he still wants to sleep with the Baroness because he's he's. Yeah. He's like he's and, just and, a horn dog for sure. Yeah, yeah. Like he's supposed to get married to Jean or something like that. Yeah. Uh, but he's and, constantly yeah. sleeping around. Yeah, yeah. And but he, he you know, but he's secular. Like he doesn't believe in it. You know, Lady Sheila. There we go. And they end up there's a storm or they end up in uh yeah, like some cave in the beach. Uh and so he's at his as has his suspicions about them. Um, but he's not entertaining them. But then they kiss in the in the lightning, and they're like, "She has no pulse." Yes. Uh, and that's that's such a, a really cool scene. That, like, I love how this is depicted. It's all these like flashes and glowing eyes, and 
fractured backgrounds. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's really like um, strum and drang. Is that is that how you pronounce that? I think so. Uh, yeah. I've never actually had to say it out loud. Yeah. I just I, I think it's you know it's it's just the, the in in typical sort of manga fashion the the background. What do we? I think it's I think another word for it, the pathetic fallacy. Uh, it's yeah, um, yeah yeah like the background the environment represents the uh, the internal state of the individuals which I I think is probably the same thing you're gesturing towards. Yeah, it's high romanticism um, no matter what you yeah 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 you slice yeah. It. yeah. Every blood vessel is dead. Uh, yeah, and he fucking freaks out and stabs her with a pitchfork. Yeah. Tries to what anyway. What a dick. Yeah. He could have just slept with her. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think she was going to eat him, though. So. That does seem to be the way. But I think they bring people into their clan that way. Like, I think it's like, I don't know. It's hard to say. You never know. Do you think Do you think that's what was going to happen? I, I like. It's not clear to me that they were going to take the individual into the clan. They had a whole village of uh, yeah. I guess they have more of a ritual when they're actually gonna when they're actually gonna bring somebody in, don't they? Yeah, which a um, more ceremonial. Yeah, a, a lot like like I was I was reminded of early modern European uh, like like sometimes people would watch at the marriage bed to make sure that there was consummation. Oh shit! Uh, Did and, not realize and that's, that. Yeah, that's and and that was uh, that was one of the uh, things that I thought of. I was like, basically, you know, the Edgar, you know, comes across this marriage ritual. It comes, it, you know, arrives at this moment of the consummation of the blood being sucked or whatever. And basically, like, basically, he walked into the room where like people were fucking while everybody was watching, uh, and you know, but it wasn't the place for him. You know, like this that, that liminal state was not for him as a small boy. Uh, that that transition that moment of transition into adulthood was forbidden oh yeah uh, freud's primal scene for as we learned in, uh, in yeah the, yeah the yeah. yeah that's right the primal scene so yeah i was i was and it but it, and it's not actually his mom and dad but it is mom and dad yeah um so so anyway that's that's what i was thinking of and then uh why do you live demon why yeah, they go full on uh, pitchfork villager. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and then Edgar like, okay, yeah. So uh, they Maribel gets killed, uh, turns into dust. Um. So yeah. So the doctor kills Baroness. Uh. Then kills uh Maribel <laughs> like it's shot five rounds rapid right into the back. And uh, and then Edgar, yeah, shows up a spirit of vengeance. Uh, we, right. Yeah, here's yeah, we create nothing, give birth to nothing. We have no legacy to pass on to the next generation. Why do we live like this for such long ages? I cannot speak for others, but as for me, and I don't think he does he does he answer that question? I don't think he does. Yeah. Well, there we go. He's- no, the curtain falls, the- plays in it. I'm, I'm free. Or actually, no, at that point, he's not free. He will be. But. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the, yeah, like, he's like, is this the part? Like, Edgar just kind of shows up at his window. And he's like, he's calling for Maribel, but it's Edgar there. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. This is the pistol you shot Maribel with. Uh... And then uh, Port, yeah, Portnoll killed, um, and so uh, basically Edgar, Edgar goes to go get Alan. And uh, does Alan choose? Help me, Mary Bull. I think he does. I think that like, he offers, you know, like yeah, some of those like come with me moments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come with me. It's too much to bear alone. And then yeah, that's they right. Just, yeah, uh, yeah. And Man, they just yeah, the... Oh, sorry. It was the fairy image, you know, like after after they fly out the window, like like ghosts. There's that one page on page 195 where uh, Edgar is depicted like explicitly like a fairy with uh, sort of goat legs, uh, you know, shepherding the the little boy under the you know like the auspices of a woman, uh, possibly an adult Maribel. Who knows? 
Um, yeah. yeah. Anyway, you were going to say something. I'm sorry. I think I'm jumping ahead. I think I got confused as to um, a different uh, different mob riot. <laughs> I guess right. the, uh, yeah. 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 The, the oh yeah, we're going to get head. full pit we get full pitchfork later. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, early on it's uh with with the doctor uh Clifford. It's just uh he's he's a one man riot. That's right. Yeah, so from this point we go we flash back into the past like so yeah, they're together, but now we're going to find out the origin of why Edgar's not such a bad guy after all. Yeah, what a yeah, he's a good guy. Well, actually, before they flash back though, once again, firing on over to that boys' school, uh, they're transfer students. You know, like we. That's right. We get that little preview of what what's to come. Yeah. The, yeah, that's a cool. They're like almost like ethereal, looking at the gate too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's it's like all the stories are leading slowly, slowly towards you know 1959. Yeah. Um, and uh, but yeah, we have to go back a little bit further, a little bit, see, um, and find the abandoned uh, Edgar and, and Maribel. Yeah. Uh, picked up by old Hannah. I didn't in, care. Um, like, you know, like uh, for a long stretch, I had no notes because this is like a very I don't know. I just didn't care that much about this part. But yeah, it, yeah. Is, it was interesting. Like it's it again is a fairy tale thing. Like the, it's the wicked stepmother plot where they were, mm-hmm. you know, this this woman basically had their nanny like bring them out and she was going to have them killed but the nanny couldn't do it so they survived wandered were found by this vampire family and then later on they're going to come back in this sort of like aristocratic um succession drama like uh you know like where you know the 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 true the the true firstborn is now arrived again and, and like they're now you know if, if this woman doesn't eliminate them then her her chosen her favorite son isn't going to be you know inherit everything Mm -hmm. yeah i i uh mostly i was i was struck by just like little moments like uh after edgar runs away from the so we already talked about the the ritual we already talked about uh the baron waiting until his 15 year old girl was 20 to get married uh and Edgar runs away and like all they do is like Mary Bell's there and they just kind of hold her in the forest and call, yeah. Yeah, and, and call for him, you know, and they, um, and it, yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's a good threat. And I think also in chapter two, I think, well, I guess we'll see King Poe or That's volume right. two. Uh, oh, I, okay. I was not, he's I thought a vampire, the masquerade. Well, I don't know if we will, but he's like, I, I thought a vampire all, too. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. like, Oh, is one of the, uh, Shit, what are they? What were they called? The antediluvians? Or the... Antediluvians, yeah, yeah. Basically, he's an antediluvian. Yeah. Uh, or something. Uh, yeah, he's, yeah, he's just like, rules. I'll find another vault. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he like wakes seldom. Every time he wakes up again, he, like men are crueler than last time, which I don't believe at all. Like, get, get some perspective, man. But yeah. uh, that's fine. I guess uh, if you're just waking up for a little bit as a vampire, then maybe just use your perspective. Um and then, yeah, like Edgar's going to be embraced by this dude. And because like he's getting the good stuff directly from the, the master's veins, like he's going to he he's like high status even among the vampires, even though he's like a young convert because he's got, uh, you know, he's he's tapped directly closest to the to the life force. Yeah. And this this whole sequence is just I did. I did think of it, you know, because, again, I can't help but think about this in the context of of a girl's magazine this this idea of like you know a changing inside my blood my flesh my bones my entire system changing um there's you know there is something of uh a puberty happening yeah uh, that makes sense you know, my blood flows languidly my body grows a cold almost frozen uh and then and then the the hagio you know writes about like what inspired her to get into comics and it, it's you know it's tezuka uh and you can you can so see the Tezuka. You can so like she was reading Com magazine, which is where Tezuka was publishing Phoenix. Yes, uh, I do see it and, for sure. Yeah, yeah, and like definitely in this stuff, like you know she was she was just she was mainlining the good shit. Yeah. Uh, you know whenever she could. Well, you know what? There's that image like speaking of like tying in exactly what you're just saying. There's an image mm. of Edgar. He's like blooming from a rose with his first cravings for blood, um, which is interesting to. Um, 
I was thinking of um, like the, the just the romantic tradition, you know, just the symbolism of roses are often uh, a symbol of Adonis in Greek mythology, um, okay. which is really appropriate because like, you know, beautifully young lover of Aphrodite and um, because he's, he's gored in a hunt and his blood stains the earth and soaks the white flowers like the, that became roses. So it's like okay. really appropriate. Just these, yeah. these things of like youth and beauty tied into the, the image of blood and, and and flowers and like it's all like it's like a condensation of this whole story in a way. Yeah. Um. And so yeah, it, yeah, Edgar sucks his first uh, blood, uh, blah blah blah, and then uh, they got to get out of there. Heck I things. love that. <laughs> the dad, like, although he's like a reluctant father, like I, uh, I love how he earns his dad's stripes. So he's like, you, you slaughter these people, you're gonna go and you're gonna watch the funeral, and like you're gonna have to sit and think about what you did. Right. I like the other quote that he, you know, like uh, humans harvest the ripened wheat to sustain their life, but our wheat has intelligence. You know, we harvest humans to sustain our life. Our wheat has intelligence. Uh, I just kind of, I like that. You know, yeah. I, it, it's weird because it's like. There's a better analogy, and they're avoiding it on purpose. Like, you know, we slaughter, man. Right. You know, like, yeah. no, no, we harvest the wheat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everything's very nice. It's very gentle. Yeah, because they're refined, exactly. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I like an important quote there, too, when he's, he's uh, like, Edgar's, like, he's, like, he doesn't feel bad about it. And the, the dad's, like. I don't care, like that's fine, but uh, like you got to realize that you know you, we have to keep ourselves hidden, or else we're gonna die. And um, Edgar just kind of like you know turns on him, spoiled teenage area. Like, Where do you keep your feelings? Because obviously you feel nothing like sympathy. But that idea of like the the, the feelings being important, um, like that that kind of lingers over. You know, like where do you keep feelings? And like there's a lot of feels for the rest of this. Like there's almost like the plot is like just edging of like a confused young man who like can't express giant feelings. Like that's that's where it keeps going. Yeah. Uh, and and yeah, definitely like like and that's his origin story. He's like, <laughs> um, and and it's actually in uh, Maribel's story is one of the. This is the few moments when there's actual actually like a. a because like we were saying previously, she's just like this fainting machine, this anemic, you know, nothingness. Uh, but here, you know, there's something like a young girl's romance. Um, although it, it too, but it's, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of for another woman. Uh, Eustace is very feminine, you know, very long, yeah. hair, very ethereal. Um, there's, um, yeah, there's a lot of gender bending in this, and we haven't really talked about that, but Eustace especially. Mm -hmm. Eustace, right. Thank you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, yeah, yeah. And, you know, again, it's, uh, well, not again, but it's, uh, he, you know, he, uh, you know, coded as he, or, or pronouns he in this, although for all intents and purposes, you know, she. Um, mama's boy. But then, like all the boys could be girls in this, you know, like yeah. all the main characters could. It's it's very like later on, uh, this is spoken about explicitly when they're in in the boarding school in chapter six when the boys are playing in the play. I, I forget if it's Orlando or or if they're doing as you like it. And I think Edgar's playing what a character I forget who, maybe Rosalind, and yeah. uh, they're like, oh, is he a boy or a girl? I I I don't know. Uh, we'll ask the audience to judge. Uh, and it's it's kind of, uh, yeah, Hagio recognizing what they're doing here and just like just signposting it. Definitely. Uh, yeah. Um, there's a weird subplot about the kids being like the child of so and so. Like, this is when I got lost. I was like, yeah. oh, this is this is too much work. You're asking me to like care a little more than I want to care. Yeah. About the it's ins and outs. <laughs> It's very much a Snow White kind of like story, basically. Mm -hmm. Like child abandoned in the woods or like left to die, then uh, you know coming back and uh, with a vengeance sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. And there's a lot in between. I uh, like what page two thirty. I've got a note about like the Evans boys have always really loved young girls. Yes, <laughs> they do say <laughs> that. that. Yeah, it's really <laughs> weird. Yeah. Well, that was is that the guy? Because there's that like 
there's kind of a fat oaf who's like who kind of goads uh what's his name oswald into uh into a duel which was charming where he's like six o'clock no that's too early i'll never be up by then then they have that duel and they like they both miss four times so they just end up drinking (laughs) sorry it was 280 not 230 can't read my own writing um Oswald spinning a water wheel in this frigid weather. Oh, she's a child. Of, I guess I guess the kids in uh, Oswald's into uh, little Mary Bell. Um, yeah, shouldn't tease Oswald anyway. Um, and then she meets uh, the other the other kid, and Eustace, and yeah, yeah. I don't know. It just yeah, it just goes. Um, it goes it goes on but i don't know uh it's the only yeah, it's not, oh yeah go on no go ahead you go ahead oh i was just gonna like mary bell gets a really awesome moment uh later on when when she figures out that edgar edgar kill like she thinks that Ed, okay so eustace used oh, yeah, how did you pronounce it again eustace eustace okay so he commits suicide because he's a coward uh, it's, he won't choose between his mom and his girlfriend uh so he's just like i'm not going to choose and um and then so so maribel thinks that that edgar's the the culprit in this instance and she she's like she goes to bed they they were they're talking about her and they're like she they, they, her kind is prone to fanaticism uh, and you know, she goes to bed with a knife, you know, I swear to myself, I am a daughter of the Evans household. I will hate the one who killed Eustace never again. Will Edgar make me a water wheel? Cause like <laughs> he used to make water wheeled for her or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And she just like a lot of self-talk and does just like really aggressive behavior. And I, uh, I was into it. That's all. Yeah. S- sleeping there with a knife. moment. Yeah. That's all. But it doesn't really come to anything, does it? <laughs> she just I didn't know how she gets uh, turned. I, I can't even remember how how that happens. Yeah, that's the thing. Like all of this is just such a blur. Uh, I've been waiting, yeah. blah, blah, blah. He runs off with her. And actually, I don't even think it's it's not. Oh, my goodness. It's not even really said. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. just like she kind of emotionally reunites with Edgar. And that, then we just I guess we assume that he converts her at some yeah. point. Yeah. What really fucking so um, the kid Oswald or yeah Oswald who had fallen in love I think it was Oswald he falls in love with Mary Bell and there's this like older woman who I guess is his bride to be like this fiance and he's silly boy you know and she's like she's talking to him and 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 there's like all the stuff that has happened all the death and destruction and she's like I for one will never leave you we are going to marry and raise children and make a happy home together we can get it all back and <laughs> that's the something... end of his story he yeah like, and that's he, he disqualifies himself by by going back to the uh you know the conventional uh family oh well i suppose that's true but like i've just there's something arresting and creepy about that it's just like yeah like like it doesn't you know it's it's a different sort of eternity it's just like yeah. you know, we can re- we can respawn all that, no problem. Yeah, it's predatory. Yeah, um, yeah, it's it's yeah, actually, yeah, that's exactly it, you know. And it's just like we're gonna we'll rebuild that together. And she's just through my body. Um, yeah, and it's a different sort of sacrifice. It's a it's a different sort of high romanticism. Uh, yeah, and yeah, and, and then it just and then it just ends. And I was like, Jesus, and like, yeah, he and never, now he the future. <laughs> so like, yeah. Okay. Now the boys school. The one image I just wanted. I, I love that um, the the angry mob uh, scene where like you have that contrasting vampire myths. Like you have um, it's like the the like straight up juxtaposition of that that fairy tale um, thing with the like you get the full poem of the uh, the limpid you know the there was a last in days of yore limpid locks of silver she wore that whole poem and then beside mm-hmm. you got the angry mob with the like dark and like they're just in silhouette torches and they're just saying like keep a blaze a torch ablaze on your doorstep hang a cross and garlic at your window and they just look like a horde of demons right yeah and it really like i don't know just like puts you like 
clearly put you on the side of of these uh, of these vampires as opposed to the uh, these ignorant uh, you know people who can't appreciate their their refinement. Yeah, like it 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 walks a really interesting balance because like they are parasitic predators. Like they yeah, really are. Yeah, they're killing and, people. And the, yeah. Yeah, it, and the and the story does nothing to hide any of that like so, sometimes you know it'll it'll use metaphors like wheat wheat has intelligence or something like that but at the end of the day like they're killing people um and yeah but it, it just like it resolutely is on the side of these people like yeah you know, vampire you know that's just like that's just part of it you know and, and, and it did remind me of twilight in that way although actually Twi- twilight goes out of its way actually I, I, maybe it's the opposite um it goes up yeah that those those stories or that story the movie uh goes out of its way to like sanitize vampirism and and make it like you know like it's a it's a it's like you can be a vampire vegan yeah exactly Uh, yeah exactly yeah 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 and uh this one's like well you can't really be a vampire vegan uh no but what you can do i do think that they're like increasingly refined and i I almost wonder if uh well we'll talk about this in the final uh movement but i almost wonder if uh like if edgar's like an evolution on top of that where like you know they they can draw out the tiniest bit and just kind of like cause people to have a fainting spell (laughs) like do that over and over again uh so that's that's kind of how he he gets his blood yeah yeah in fact, uh, yeah, like, I, I was very confused by this, but there's the uh, like he talks about like surviving on the essence of roses. And I mean, I guess I could just be like a coded like they have a little vial and like maybe mm-hmm. they're just like drawing intense nutrition from it. But it, it seems like he has some sort of like special ability to process it because he's close to the Poe founder. It seems to. Yeah. Like and, and I'm I'm really glad that it didn't bother uh explaining too much like it it does explain some of the rules but then the rest you're kind of left to just be like oh well that's a rule you know like the 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 roses have something but i think i think the like it takes place on a poetic level like there's so much swirling there's so much like yes whirlpool motions there's like it it it, and we already talked about like the all of a sudden like poetry will just break into the text um and i think i think the the text I, I think Hagio is like, well, the roses represent blood and yeah. youth and all the, you know, and just like, just use your imagination because this is a girl's comic. Uh, and they've, and so later on, yeah, their, their vial is broken. Yeah. Uh, and in fact, in that last moment, like the last movement, rather the like the final chapter in the, in the school, like more yeah. so like she just like fully embraces herself. And like, there's so many of those like splash panels and like guys with like flowing hair and shit like that. It's pretty yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, I'm just looking at one of them now. The um I was confused I w- I was confused. I I did reread uh like I skimmed I skimmed and sort of took notes through the other stuff, but I like I was like I did not I th- I think I was just like my endurance had run out uh for chapter 6 and so I was like okay, I'm going to I'm going to reread most of it cuz I still wasn't going to re- reread all of it cuz like what the fuck um but it's them at a boarding school 1959 uh they're coming back they're like some kid has committed suicide uh jimmy carr is Rob, killian robin carr. robin carr pardon me um i don't know where killian's the like dreamy like uh mysterious tortured heartthrob yeah and Mateus is uh, the flower guy, the the kid who who grows flowers. You know, there's a metaphor, uh, just yeah. embracing it completely. And they, yeah, the two boys show up. Um, and from London, and this is Germany. And uh, yeah, they just uh, the bird's nest. Yeah. Um, and I must say too that this, like, the last movement is defined, I think, by two things. First, there's like this lover spat between Alan and Edgar, and they're kind of like flirting with other boys and like doing it kind of to make each other jealous and mm. there's also that like it mainly the mystery of the death of, of uh this this robin kid mm-hmm. which the ultimate explanation for why he commits suicide is really chilling um i, I don't Tell think me I, I don't think i understood it okay so okay so he he uh the the he, they first encounter him as a like you go to page like uh 473 
um, they find him as a baby. Like, you know, they find him as a child, like a fucking real young yeah, he's kid. Like five or six or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And and they're like, oh, little Robin, who are we? We're angels, Robin. And she's, show me your wings. And they just come back, you know, like, and they're, they're his little childhood friends, like the Peter Pan thing. Um, but the dad, you know, the little Robin, his, his, I think that they're grooming little Robin to become a vampire. Yeah, for sure. Um, but the, you know, little Robin, they're they're kind of testing him, I think too. Like, I think they, he says something like, you know, we were going to look in on him and if he didn't, there's some sort of standards where they would, they would, you know, carry him over if he did this. I can't remember what the condition was. Right. Maybe we'll see it in a moment, but you know, but when he was seven, his parents divorced and he went with his mother to Liverpool. Um, and, and then the father abandons him, you know, in the end, Robin's father left him at school, remarried and moved to Italy. And so the, you know, the little kid who was seeking eternal life, you know, he, he commits suicide, uh, cause he was so sad and lonely, you know, yeah, he, and he's and, asking and, and, his last words were something like angels come or something like that. Like, yeah, he, like he was like hoping that they save him or something. I think so. And, I didn't really and he, understand. Was, he, he was when well, he was bullied by the kids too. Yeah. Um by Killian most of all. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah. you know, there's that moment where Edgar's like, you know, we killed uh you know, they're always talking about who killed Robin Cock and you're like okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're just making it way more explicit than you ought to. But um uh yeah, you know, there's this idea that um <clears throat> They uh, like I don't. They killed him in the sense that they didn't save him. It, like they didn't they didn't come back fast enough. Yeah. Whereas Kill, Killian's bullying, uh, literally killed him, or yeah. sent sent him into suicide. Um, but all of that all of that sort of in the like, it was one of the reasons I I found it so, and I only really kind of understood it in, in reread is just because like it seems so tacked on. Yeah, it, it's, you know, like, who did this? Who who killed Robin Cock? Who killed Robin Cock? And then, like they're saying, I did. I Sparrow, I did. And it's kind of, you know, kind of signposting it. But then at the same time, there it's not because it doesn't really explain anything. You get two pages worth of like uh, forced text and then you're stuck with it. Yeah, it's almost like a, it's almost like a memento, like telling of the story where like a thing will happen. You're like, what the fuck just happened? And then like five pages later, you'll get some sort of explanation that isn't quite satisfying and like. Yeah, I found this one. Yeah, it took me a long time to get through this because I just like I was confused constantly. Like all the guys look the same except for like there's like one or two dark haired ones. It's a whole school of boys and they're they're all like flirting with each other. And you're just like, I just don't know who you are. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really tough. And it, it it's yeah. a shame because. Uh, like, I think it needed to be half as long. Right? Yeah, like the, the main emotional beats could have been hit, you know, like because what yeah. you said is true. It, you know, it is a lover's fat. They are, but it involves like the, you know, once again, Mary Bell gets between the two of them in an indirect way. There's, yeah. there's, you know, the, the old teacher, he has the little locket and it's got a picture of essentially Mary Bell and Alan gets jealous. So he steals the watch. Um, yeah. and, uh, and he also, so that, um, what's the, the flower guy's name again? Matthias. Matthias. Yeah. Like he's kind of like throwing himself at Mateus, like kind of leading him on and but uh, like he grows these rare roses and like the most barbaric thing that like they do in this chapter like and, i mean like it's ridiculous but like that's there really is the emotional effect that this story wants to give you is that mm. like it took three years to 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 grow them and and uh, alan like cuts like sneaks in and cuts them up so like they're just as they were about to bloom you know like this this moment of rare beauty is destroyed by alan yeah, and later on when he tells him, he's like, "What's wrong with you?" That <laughs> yeah, exactly. took, that took yeah. me three years. <laughs> yeah, and it's like obviously like a you know like a a just play strike against Edgar too because it's like the, the roses are his thing. That's a symbol. He can draw sustenance mm-hmm. from them. Yeah, and Alan's really explicit. He's like, "Don't you like me more than your roses?" Yeah, you, know, like, you should have. You should like me more than Mary Bell. He's just going on about it, it's very. Yeah. Yeah, he's still hung up on that shit. Alan sucks, really. Like, and I think that's probably why, like, uh, despite the fact that Edgar wants to maybe kill Killian, depending on his involvement in the, you know, Robin Carr's death, he's also like falling for him. It's another of those like, 
you know, you, if only you knew the real Killian, like you wouldn't, you would realize that he, he has so much depth. Yeah. Such yeah. a good guy. Yeah. He like, he wanted, you know, he, he lost his parents too, but like, he just, this, uh, this Robin guy drew so much emotion out of him and like this hatred because Robin couldn't keep it together. He was weaker. And so like he chased him into the swamp and all this shit. Yeah, and I've been uh, so there's uh, I'm I, I'm just looking at it now. It's uh, page four sixty four. Maribel's uh, broken into the narrative all of a sudden because uh, Edgar's having a fantasy where she's like a ghost out to embrace him. And what does she say? I've been I've been waiting for the angels, you know, like so she's Robin Carr in this instance. Uh, I've been waiting, Edgar. I've been waiting all this time, Edgar, and he's got his arms open. Um, and they embrace, you know, always longing, all in a tiny box or perhaps a small pond. <laughs> <laughs> and he wakes up, you know, like, uh, it's a glorious day. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah, it's I don't right. know. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, like, it's it, the, these stories are, they are, uh, you know, obviously, you know, it's a girl's girls manga but it but it is there's something like deeper about nostalgia contained within all of this like Mar- mary bell is is that place that you return to where all is pure and innocent um and girls girls in this story still have an, an, an eternity they still have a, a purity that you would normally find in literature uh yeah you know romantic literature like there's it still maintains that but it like by displacing all of the stories onto boys it allows for to you know it you can have a protagonist you know it yeah it it, 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 it still manages to be even though it's so gender bending it's gender bending in sort of this perverse way that allows it to still be normative um uh and but get commenting on it i don't know it's really smart i i like i i it's much better than Sailor Moon. <laughs> uh, that's true for sure. You know, much more understandable too. And to maybe see some of the like the stagecraft behind it, like I feel like, like maybe we might be able to see see through a little bit of like the effect a little bit. But like, mm-hmm. um, there it's like the, by the end, like she's just purged women from the story, and it's this it's this womanless world of boys, and they all just need help to feel more. And like, who's not gonna like you know what what what. Uh, shoujo reading girl is not gonna just like have their heart bleed for that you know yeah they just uh yeah they just they just need some uh you know <laughs> they just just need to fall in love with each other that's all exactly just talk about their feelings and resolve that stuff yeah but in the end like okay so so alan and, and Mateus are both impaled um and die together in in orgasmic bliss what uh, well, don't they? Yeah, because the little guy comes in and he stabs them, and then isn't uh, isn't Edgar left alone? Yeah, like don't go, um, Mateus. Did I and... not finish the story? Well, it it you know the thing is like a major death can happen in the story, and you'll miss it. Uh, four four eighty six or thereabout, you know. Um, oh yeah, it's Mateus. Yeah. He's oh Mateus disintegrated because right? because they did bite Mateus. Yeah, but move to the next page. Like they're both. You know, like basically coming as they burn to death, uh, and uh, <laughs> and so I think I think I think Killian's watching it happen because I can't again I can't tell who's who I don't know but Edgar's fine, uh, and yeah, uh, and Killian's like if if I turn no, into no. a death person oh wait who is I it? think it is it is Alan at the end though right like they're he's kind of teasing them. Did you hurt yourself? Your neck's bleeding. Uh, and then he says to Edgar, do you have the visas? The ones we came over with are still in effect. Write to us, will you? So they just kind of like, yeah, because they um, they take off and then leaving uh, Killian and Mateus uh, to kind of like freak out because like, you know, he, oh, he Alan, bit Mateus. Oh, he bit Killian. Yeah. 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 Again, yeah, Killian's freaking out. Yeah, Alan and Ed are going away. Okay, all right. So yeah, I, yeah. I take that back. All right. And they have that mode of reconciliation where, like, uh, you know, like, he's just like, I can't, I can't get sustenance from the roses, but you eat them, and I'll get the energy from you. And it's like, mm-hmm. you know, they're now they're they're gonna learn to trust each other a little more, I guess. 
yeah for the time being uh and yeah and uh yeah okay all right so you're right and then they run off uh and that there's some sort of but the so and then Killian, you know, the vampirella, vampirella blood burrowed deep into Killian's body and was passed on to his descendants as a recessive gene. Yeah, like what does that mean? <laughs> but that is the story for another day. And you're like, okay, Can't all right, wait. I, yeah, fucking right. Um, I did, I, I did that thing where like sometimes I, I get an impulse and and um, it, particularly if there's like a pre-order, and sometimes just to satisfy myself, I'll hit pre-order. And uh, let it sit for a couple of days so I can feel that I purchased it and then I'll cancel. Nice. Um, and uh, that happened with with volume two. Um, OK, I was like, what the what the fuck was I thinking? I don't want to own that <laughs> Dude, <laughs> little volume two edging. Yeah. And I'm just like, mm, I don't know. I don't. Um, yeah. So that was that was that, I guess. Um, <laughs> we want to do want to do guilty or innocent on this guy. Um, yeah, I guess we have to. Yeah, I guess. So I'll, uh, usually when I ask, I end up going second. I'll go first. Yeah, you go. Um, I'm going to say that this, uh, so Poe Clan, volume one, Moto Hagio, um, is, uh, a perfectly innocent tale of young lovers who, uh, engage in perfectly normal behavior and, um, there's nothing, any subtext to the matter whatsoever. And I think that uh, there's just a lot of perverted minds out there who can't uh, keep their minds out of the gutter. And, that makes a lot uh, of sense. Yeah, this is this is uh, this is great uh, fiction. Give it. Uh, consider giving this to if you have a daughter. Uh, consider giving this to them for Christmas, or possibly a birthday. Absolutely. I think I, I think I might have pulled this one before, but I'm going to say that. Maybe as mortals, we're not fit to judge the Vampirella. Uh, I think I think Edgar would have some problems with that. Uh, so maybe it's us who are on trial. And I'm gonna say, my friend, that you and I probably aren't worthy of uh, of joining the Poe Clan. So I think oh, uh, Eternity is gonna pass us by on this one. Oh fuck, that's too bad. We just we just don't. I don't think we can appreciate it on the level that they that you know we don't have the sensitivity of soul. Yeah, if we just knew the real Edgar. Yeah. Uh, then you know, or the real Killian in this instance, I I think that um, yeah, that's a damning indictment, but probably not wrong. So yeah. All right. Well, that was that, ladies and gents. Uh, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I I recommend this. You know, like I I think anybody who uh, who likes comics and just wants to see like something, you definitely got to see this. I think uh, so. It's interesting. It's unique. Um, you're yeah. never going to see anything like this. And it's, it's, you know, it's, it's just so beautifully rendered, like honestly. So yeah, check it out. Yeah. Um, and other works, uh, the Fantagraphics has, has published a, a number of like more, more modern Hagio works, but this is, uh, this is, this is the sweet nectar of the beginning, the sweet flower of bloom. Now, all we need is a little energon and a lot of luck. 